faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are looking closely at the book of Psalms. So today we look at Psalm 13. This is a psalm of lament and help, and it connects with our lives today. We will we'll be looking into that. As, as the same time, same time as we lament, we celebrate today because we're going to celebrate the baptism of Nathaniel, Abel, Abuta, uh, and Nathaniel's family is here with sponsors. This is a really wonderful uh, day. We will also be thanking programmatic year leaders and helpers in the ministries of the church and also praying God's blessing on students at the end of the school year. So lots is happening. As we begin worship today, we acknowledge that uh, these are the traditional homelands of the Puyallup people of the Coast Salish Nation. And we lift up the vision that God has given us to be a diverse community of faith where all are welcome. A community that is spirit-filled, compassionate, healthy, reconciled, and just. And we are living into that vision all the time. Let me share with you a little bit about what's happening in the life and the ministry of Peace Lutheran Church. Uh, the big news is our reopening task force, together with the council, have uh, announced that now we will be reopening in-person worship um, indoors beginning July 25th in two services. Our, our normal schedule uh, will return to 8.30 service and 11 o'clock service with many COVID precautions. We will be very careful um, to protect those who are vulnerable and to love our neighbor in that way. This summer, we have three outdoor worship experiences. Next Sunday is the first one, Sunday, June 20th. We'll gather out on the corner lot. Please wear a mask. Please uh, use uh, practice social distancing. And it will be a wonderful time to be together, finally, after so long. So look for the third Sunday of each month, June, July, and August. That will be June 20th, July 18th, August 15th, for us to worship together outside. Uh, next Sunday, because of the outdoor worship service, there will be no 9 o'clock fellowship time through Zoom and no educational classes. It will simply be the worship service outside at 11 o'clock. And this coming Friday, we have a memorial service for Donna Miller that's happening at uh, Mountain View uh, Cemetery in the Celebration Center Chapel. It is Friday, June 18th at 2 o'clock. We will give thanks to God for Donna's life, and we will hear words of comfort and hope that sustain us in grief. And that service will be live-streamed. Memorial gifts should be given in Donna's name to Peace Lutheran Church from those who would like to donate. Uh, Friday community meals happen. Uh, they're from 5.30 to 6.30, and they are grab-and-go with community resources. We are receiving applications for an internship uh, position at Peace Lutheran Church and Peace Community Center. It is the vision and call position, and it starts again at the end of August and goes for nine and a half months. So if, if you or someone you know might be interested in that position, please reach out to Brendan Nelson. There is a, a link to click on in the announcements that we sent out through email. It's good to give God thanks with our offerings, and we're grateful for your continued offerings uh, to the ministry of Peace Lutheran Church. You can do that by sending that offering in the mail or go online to the giving tab or set up electronic giving in the office. Soon we'll be able to receive offering in person. Pastor Jay is out of the office until this Friday. He's in an academic intensive week. We are praying for Pastor Jay during this time. And check the announcements that come out uh, weekly in emails. Let me know if you're not getting those and would like to. If you are new to peace, welcome. Um, God bless you. And please let me know if you would like me to make contact with you. Okay? And we want to thank... Uh, thank God for our musicians today. Take it away. Let's praise God with singing.
That's the message of God to us in our baptism. And that's the message that comes to little Nathaniel today in baptism. Our God is a God who knows our name. Our God is a God who deeply loves all of us and desires for us to live in peace in God's world. And so an opportunity for us as we gather for worship to share God's peace with one another. So wherever you are, um, people around you or people you might encounter this week or text or call this week, um, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Thank you. Please take a time now to share God's peace with the people around you. My mom used to say, growing up, when the devil is busy, God is going to be even busier. Amen. Okay. We're having some tech, technical difficulties this, this morning, but I feel like God is going to be busy today. Amen. 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 Join me in prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for bringing us here to this space at this appointed time. Yes. We ask that you would meet us in this place, oh God. Open up our hearts and our minds to, to hear your word and to celebrate life. We ask that you just continue to uh, bless the service and our time together. Lord, we, we cancel every assignment that is trying to come forth to hinder what is going to happen today. Mm -hmm. We ask for your, your covering yes. and your love today. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we have our opening reading. Good morning. Today's Psalm is Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death, and my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in you, my steadfast love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation, and I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt with me bountifully. Here ends the first reading. Amen. Amen. said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose 
nothing in all that has given me, but I will raise it up the last day. This indeed is the will of the Father, and all that who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up also on the last day. Here ends the second meeting. Amen. Amen. God, that God is our anchor in the eye of the storm. Amen. God is very present with us today. Um, this is a sermon on uh, lament. And yes, I lament some technical difficulties today, but I am grateful that we have backup technology. I am grateful for you if you are seeking to uh, be present live today, that you're hanging in there. I'm grateful, too, that this will be posted later for people to be able to worship at a, at a future time. Mike, here's a question to think about. Um, have you ever uh, had a friend or a family member you were really close to, but when you were going through a tough time or really struggling, you decided not to share too much with them because you didn't want to overwhelm them or you didn't want to have them feel like they had to carry a burden that was too heavy for them. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever done that? Um, kind of held back. It happens. We're human beings. And we human beings can't always handle all the hard stuff that others are sharing with us. Uh, we human beings hold back sharing some of the bad stuff with the people we love um, the most. That's real talk. Here's the thing. The book of Psalms comes to us as a gift from God. And there are 150 psalms here in the Bible in which God meets us in different emotions and feelings and experiences that we have as human beings. And today we see in Psalm 13 that God is saying to us, give me your bad stuff. Amen? God is saying to us, I can handle it. I can handle your heartache. I can handle your pain, God says. I can handle your struggle. I can handle the injustice of the world that you need to voice to me. And I can handle your doubts. Just bring them to me, God says. Psalm 13 is a psalm of lament. And the psalms sound like songs, right? It's a song of lament. It's like singing the blues. Um, lament in the Bible is an expression of sorrow. It's a description of distress. It's a, uh, a protest against injustice. It's questioning God. So here in Psalm 13, in verses 1 and 2, we hear these questions. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you Hide your face from me. How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? How long? Four different times. How long? How long? You can hear the anger, can't you? You can hear the confusion. You can hear the despair in the psalmist's voice. Psalm 13 is a prayer for when life hits bottom. How long? It's a psalmist really saying, 
God, life sucks. Where are you? Where are you? I mean, just being real before God. Have you been there? Have you been in that place of lament? Maybe you're there now. Sometimes it's a season. Sometimes it's upon reflection. We lift up our lament to God. Psalm 13 and other psalms can help us to name the times of pain and can help us in the times of pain. Has somebody ever told you, it doesn't help to get upset, just trust God, right? Well, I mean, that sounds maybe like good advice, but does that mean that if we trust God, we'll never be upset? Does that mean I don't have enough faith in God because I'm upset or I'm struggling right now? There are times, let me tell you, in the life of every follower of Jesus, when even though you're walking by faith, God seems far away. That doesn't mean you don't have faith. There are times when you pray, but God doesn't seem to answer. You read the Bible, but you can't just seem to hear God speaking to you. You seek God, but it seems like God's hiding. Have you asked how long? How long, God? All of us ask that or something like that once in a while. Lament is important. In our culture that is often in a state of denial, right? Lament gives us the opportunity to share what personally and communally pains us, right? Including our part in that pain. Lament helps us name it and express it honestly. And that's an important step. Psalm 13 can give us help in the dark valleys, in the deep valleys of our life. And more than that, Psalm 13 can help us move through those places of lament to another place. Amen? There's some movement that can happen there. Psalms of lament tell us God is big enough for everything we got. All the pain, all the, the, the struggle all the doubts, God can handle it. Yes, you can be a person of faith and still have doubts, question God, challenge God, get mad at God. Psalm 13 tells us, yes, bring your pain to God. And if verses one and two express the problem here, the pain, then verse three moves us along to a petition from the problem to a petition to calling on God for help. Consider and answer me, God. Give light to my eyes. What could that mean, give light to my eyes? We talked about that in Bible study this week. Maybe it could mean open my eyes or give me some insight or brighten my path a little bit. Show me at least a little bit of the way so I can take a step forward. God, give light to my eyes. Psalms of Lament point us to the only true source of help, and that is God. Amen? That's really our only true source of help. So Lament can be that way that we come to God, not only with the bad stuff, but also with our need for God. Calling on God for guidance and healing and wholeness and justice in our world coming to the one who is the source of all good and of life. And we do that not just on behalf of our individual selves, what I need personally, but also for our families, for our community, for our nation, for our world. So right now, I I'd like you to think about what are those questions that you have? What are those burdens that weigh down on you? What is your lament? Individually, but also communally, and as you look at our world. Let me, let me, uh, well, I'll invite you right now, if you are live and you can access some comments, and I know we've had some challenges here today, but if you can do that, and you wanted to write down a lament that you bring to God today, please do that. I want to suggest for you some that are the big picture laments that we may have in these days, such as the widespread and the ongoing impact of the COVID pandemic. There is deep lament in there. The disproportionate negative effects on black, brown, indigenous, and people of color. 
hatred and violence toward the Asian American and Pacific Islander community. Police brutality and racial bias. I'm thinking of Manny Ellis, I'm thinking of George Floyd and so many others. Systemic racism in unemployment, in employment and in the health system and in education and in housing and criminal justice. Senseless gun violence taking the lives of innocent people. You know, we're coming up on the sixth anniversary of the Emmanuel Nine who were shot and killed during Bible study. Homelessness, economic poverty, hunger. What, what's on your heart today? Uh, refugees being displaced due to war and unrest in our world, deep political division, people who don't have empathy for somebody else's point of view. Climate change, that is especially destructive for communities that are vulnerable in our world. Maybe it's people in our lives who are struggling with cancer or illness or depression or unhealthy relationships or habits. What is it for you? Would you put down, um, would you write down or either in the comment section or maybe take some time on your own sometime this week to write your laments to God? and to lift them up to God in prayer. As you put them down, it's a way to pray, to give them over to God. Uh, find the time and the space to do that. One of the values of Peace Luther Church is courage. We say we engage the realities of life with perseverance. Expressing our lament is courageous. It's courageous to do that. Music is really important to me, and I will tell you that one of some of you know this, one of my favorite styles of music is the blues. You know, the blues is lament. And there was a particular season in my life when I really heavily relied on the blues. It was a time of blues for me. It was a, a season in my life when a long-term relationship um, for me fell apart. It was done. And uh, I really lost my life's direction. The blues. Uh, I learned during that time originated in the oppressive experiences and the despair of African Americans in post-emancipation South. And blues, I heard a definition, this really resonates, it's personal catastrophe expressed musically. How's that? A personal catastrophe expressed musically. That's the blues. It helps you get out of bed in the morning because it helps you see you are not alone in your pain. You got it. There's other people who are struggling too. Blues does not sugarcoat. It tells it like it is. It names the pain. And that is true lament. So it helps you, if it helps you today to write a blues song about the lament in your life, do that. How are you singing the blues? What is your lament? We need lament. Lament is important for our human experience. We need the blues. But there is another kind of music we need too, and that's a kind of music that we do a lot around here, and that's gospel. We need gospel music too. We need gospel paired with blues in our lives. So in Psalm 13, after moving from voicing lament to asking for help from God, moving from a problem to petition, the psalmist now makes a final move to praise. Thanks be to God. Praise that even in the midst of the lament and the need for help, we can always praise God. Amen? That God is present and God is at work. See here in verses 5 and 6, but, but I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because God has dealt bountifully with me. That is a note of trust. That's a note of good news, that life is messy. Things aren't as they should be in this world. And here's the word that changes things, but, right? The psalmist says, but God is still here with us. Amen. And God is at work. And that's the gospel. So when we're talking about this psalm in the community Bible study this week, somebody mentioned the footprints poem. 
lot of people have heard that poem. Let me remind you what happens in that story of footprints in the sand, because it's really what's going on in Psalm 13 today. It's a person telling about a dream they had. They're walking the beach, and they saw scenes from their life flashing across the sky and sets of footprints in the sand each time they saw a, a, a scene. And many, many times, two sets of footprints together, they interpreted that as their footprints and the Lord's footprints. But then there were also many scenes that flashed across the sky and they looked down and there were only one set of footprints. One set of footprints. And that person was very troubled and came to God and said, Lord, you said you're always going to be with me. Then why is it as I look back over my life that there were times that they were often the lowest and the saddest times of my life, but there were only one set of footprints there. God, why did you leave me? Why weren't you there when I needed you the most? And if you've heard this story, remember the answer from the Lord is, my precious beloved child, I will never leave you. When you saw those, that one set of footprints only, it was then that I was carrying you. I was carrying you. That's the gospel. That's the good news. That in the deepest time of trouble and lament, God is always there, never abandoning us. God's love is steadfast and strong and sure and constant. God is always present. God is always opening opportunities, giving new possibilities for us. Lament in the Bible never stands alone. It's always paired with hope. The blues is paired with the gospel if we're going to get the fullness of the message from God. Thomas Dorsey began playing juke joints all right, as a blues artist, and what came out of that was the beginnings of gospel music, praise God. Gospel music shares the good news of Jesus and redemption and salvation and deliverance. I'm thinking of this song. Wherever you are, if you want to join, precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take Precious Lord, lead me home. Can you hear the trust? Can you hear the hope? Can you hear the good news coming through in that song? Today we're celebrating the baptism of little Nathaniel. I'm looking at little Nathaniel right now. He's all dressed up in a beautiful suit. It is white. And it is a celebration day for you, Nathaniel. This is the gospel being sung in a strong way, coming through in the sacrament of baptism. Wow, his eyes are really fixed on me. Hi, Nathaniel, yes. And this is what God is saying to you, Nathaniel, today, that no matter what you go through in your life, the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, God is always going to be with you. God loves you very, very much. You are God's own child. God knows your name, and God will be with you. Other thing is, God has a special calling on your life to love and serve God and God's people and God's world. That is very, very special. Baptism carries a message of hope, in the midst of lament. It's the gospel in the time of the blues, right? And I'm wondering today if you'll think about how God in your life has turned your lament into hope. 
at different times. I'm thinking back to my my time of lament, and, and really um, from that really low point, there was lament that continued afterward because for many, many years I deeply desired, uh, I deeply desired a life partner and I hoped for kids. Um, you know, God met me in my lament, and as I prayed these prayers, God helped me to trust God and to come to a place where, hey, if that desire didn't become reality for me, it would be okay. I was at a place of peace. Being a, a single person, I had a lot of support and, a ful and fulfilling work and everything. And I was at that place of trust in God and peace, and then along came we. Praise God. And um, she came into my life, and then Luke and Joy came, and here I am. Um, married with a couple kids. Thanks be to God. You never know where God will lead you, but God led me through lament to a place of trust and a place of peace, and I pray that for you too. Lament and hope. We can't truly hear the gospel unless we're willing to deal with the blues. Uh, we can't really reach out to our neighbors unless we're willing to connect with them at their places of struggle really connect with empathy. We may want a gospel without the blues, just like we may want to have the resurrection of Jesus without his suffering and death, but we can't have that. It's a whole package with God, and we need both. Jesus is our friend who takes our hand through our times of struggle and uh, invites us to bring our burdens to God, gently leads us into trust, from problem to petition to praise. That's the movement with God in our lives. And if there are times when we feel as if we're all alone, Psalm 13 invites us to pray, give light to my eyes so that I may see it's my Lord who is carrying me. Let us sing.
Thanks be to God. I'm going to invite forward now for the sacrament of holy baptism, Nathaniel Abel Abuta and his parents, um, Tariq and Myra Abuta, and also uh, sponsors, Javier and Isabel Osoto, and any other family who would like to come up, come on up and just stand right here. And we're gonna just sing a little wade in the water as you come, okay? sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us up to new life in Jesus. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ. We're anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we're joined in God's mission for the life of the world. So parents and sponsors of Nathaniel, do you present Nathaniel for baptism? If so, say it together, we do. We do. Wonderful. And as you bring Nathaniel to receive the gift of baptism, you're entrusted with some responsibilities. To live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to worship, to receive the word of God in the meal of communion, to teach him the Lord's Prayer and the Creed and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, nurture him in faith and prayer, so he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Nathaniel grow in Christian faith and life? If so, please say together, we do. We do. We do. Wonderful. People of God, and this is you, wherever you are, do you promise to support Nathaniel and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, say together, we do. We do. We do. Um, it's time now for us to profess our faith in Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. This is the faith in which we baptize. So first, let's have an opportunity to renounce or say no in three ways. Do you renounce evil, all the powers of injustice and oppression in this world that defy God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So we affirm 
God as the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's now time for baptism. And so, okay, if you could just pull Nathaniel's head over the water here. Um, actually, take a quick moment before you do that, just to get prepared for that. I'm going to pour a little bit more water in. We use water in baptizing from the very beginning. And water is very special. Uh, we need it in our lives for life, for, oops, we need it for cleansing, we need it for, uh, we know that it is powerful. In the same way, the water of baptism carries God's promise of life, life in God, eternal life, and cleansing from sin, forgiveness, and it's powerful. The power of the Holy Spirit is present here today. Okay, and so here we go. Nathaniel, Abel, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now here's a special cloth embroidered with his name oh. and also the baptism day oh. that you can use. Okay, you can take it from there. <laughs> okay. And you can keep that as a special gift from the church to you. And now, the sign of the cross on Nathaniel's forehead. Nathaniel, child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay, let's have a prayer. And if you will place your hands on Nathaniel, maybe you can move it to the middle. So the family members do that while I do a prayer. That would be great. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your children new birth. You cleanse us from sin and you raise us to eternal life. Sustain Nathaniel with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, Mr. Brendan is going to light this candle over here. The candle on the altar is the sign of the risen living Jesus in our midst. And so now, please receive this candle sponsors. And this is a sign that Nathaniel shines the light of Jesus in the world. Uh, Brennan, I'm going to actually bring this over so you can read this. Okay? There's some scripture that goes with that. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. He's also a copy because he's with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Words of calling to you from the prophet Micah 6 and 8. The Lord has told you, Nathaniel, what is good and what does the Lord require but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. 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 Okay, and we know that parents and sponsors need prayer too. So here's a prayer for you all, okay? God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon Tariq and, and Myra, Nathaniel's parents, and Javier and Isabel. Nathaniel sponsors, let them always rejoice in the gift you've given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness. Strengthen them in their own baptism so they may share eternally with Nathaniel the salvation you've given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is when we all get to welcome little Nathaniel into God's family. Okay? And so... We're going to use these particular words. If you have them nearby, join me. Welcome to the Lord's family and the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and sharing the good news of Jesus with all the world. Let's give thanks to God for what God has done. Amen. Praise God. And you can go back to your seat, okay? And sometimes we sing this song. We just sing a, a refrain of it. 
I've just come from the fountain. I've just come from the fountain, Lord. I've just come from the fountain. His name is so sweet. Oh, Lord, I've just come from the fountain. Students, I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Brendan forward to do that. And after that, a thank you to our programmatic year helpers at Peace. This past week, I had a conversation with a few friends who have young people who are um, graduating. And one of, the, one of the things that the parents said was, we are so grateful for the resiliency of our children. Yeah. And just think about the year that we've all had and, and think about what our young people have had to experience. Remote learning and hybrid learning and mm. Zooming and all of that and the amount of resiliency it has taken for them to overcome. So today we celebrate them and we ask God's continued blessings over them. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of our graduates um, that we take time to celebrate today. We know that it, is, it has been um, a year, it has been challenging, but we are so grateful for the resiliency of our young people. Asking that you continue to guide them and, and to cover them, uh, to shield them as they move on to the next phase and the next chapters in their lives. Let's continue to give them strength and continue to um, strengthen us to be encouragers of our young people. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In the email that we sent out uh, to everybody, we have a link that goes to a list of people who have served throughout this programmatic year in different uh, faith, family, and intergenerational ministries. And so I want to name the names of folks and then have a word of a blessing. Uh, Pew Pals, this was Kim and Julia Seveny uh, doing this from Japan. This is what uh, technology allows you to be able to do. The Pew Pals are special activity sheets for kids to use um, during the week that connect in with uh, the message from the Sunday morning. Sunday School Godly Play uh, for Children, which has been videos that we have posted online this past year. Pastor Jay Bates, Jeannie Correa, Kathy Hanawalt, Carmen Lampman, Brendan Nelson, Siri Preston, and Lee Wong. Thanks be to God for you. The Sunday School for the 5th and 6th graders, which has been a Zoom time on Sundays. Pastor Jay Bates, Ben Flesher, Brendan Nelson, and Siri Preston. The Confirmation Feet to Faith program for middle school students, which has been happening, uh, that's actually 7th and 8th graders, on Sunday mornings by Zoom. Pastor Jay, Brendan Nelson, Siri Preston, and myself. The Change Makers group for middle and high school youth. Wednesdays from 5 to 6, and at other special times of service, Carissa Carroll and Brendan Nelson. Thanks be to God for you. The adult education time, especially Sunday mornings through Zoom this past year, Pastor Jay Bates, Malcolm Carroll, Craig Cogger, Ben Flesher, Brendan Nelson, myself, and Carol Watson. The youth servant events that we have had for middle and high school youth Myra Ballantyne, Craig Cogger, Bill and Kathy Hanawalt, Brendan Nelson, Kathy Olson, and myself. And intergenerational events, a lot of this has happened in a grab-and-go kind of way. Um, materials for 
children and parents, families intergenerationally you can use at home. Pastor Jay, Jeannie Correa, Robin McGoy, Brendan Nelson, and Rebecca Valencia. Thanks be to God for you. Let's have a word of prayer. God, we're grateful that so many are willing and able to share their gifts in ministry, in ministries with children, youth, adults, of faith formation and in intergenerational connections. Thank you for the creativity and the flexibility that so many people have shown in leadership and in health during this past pandemic year. And we are grateful that you have been present. You have been very, very present with us, with your love, your grace, your strength, and your guidance. In Jesus' name. Okay, now we're going to um, enter into the prayers of the people. All, since I'm up here, I'm going to name uh, those prayers that have come to me during this week, and then Mr. Brendan will gather any prayers that you might have. If you've posted any prayers in the comment section, prayers of need, prayers of thanksgiving that we can lift up, that would be great. So I want to lift up uh, gratitude, of course, at the baptism of Nathaniel. Thanks be to God and prayers for him as he continues to, to grow um, healthy and strong uh, as, a, as a person and in faith in God. Praise at the birth uh, this past week of Denise Greenwood Walker's new granddaughter, Tania, and prayers for that little baby's health. Um, thanksgiving for the gifts of the LGBTQ community in this Pride Month. Mm -hmm. uh, lifting up our laments that we've voiced today or that we've reflected on um, today as we've looked at Psalm 13, asking God for help and also acknowledging that God is present and leading us into new places, new directions, um, and prayers for the church as we seek to respond to the laments of the world um, with work that God is doing for healing and hope and justice and health. Uh, prayers for the Living Stones Prison Congregation, which is the congregation behind the walls of the uh, Washington Correction Center in Shelton. Pastor Chris Odie was present in the adult forum today to tell us about that. And prayers for healing and strength for Loretta Carter, Pam Asadi's mom, for Ron Green, who had surgery this week, for Brendan Nelson's uh, father and brother, um, brother, especially in this time of grief, for Tamisha Nelson, uh, for health, for Jim Reedy, for, for health for him and strength, and for Antonio Yoon, um, facing health concerns. Those are the concerns that I have. Uh, Mr. Brennan, if you want to come forward. So we lost our connection, and so a lot of the prayers that it come through. Um, we're not able to see those anymore, but yet we will still pray. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you again for bringing us to this place. We pause to um, lift up the concerns of your people. The things that are on our hearts today, um, things that we are struggling with, whether it be health, from physical to mental and emotional, we ask that you just meet us in the place where we need you most. We ask for your protection, we ask for your guidance, we ask for your outstretched arms to wrap around your people today. Give us the strength that we need, give us the patience that we need, the understanding to continue to, to move forward. And yeah. Thank you for the prayers that have gone forth the petitions, both spoken and things that are um, laying on our hearts that we have not shared. Again, be with us. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
blessing as we conclude worship today. May God be before you to show you the way, be above you to watch over you, behind you to encourage and inspire you, beside you as your faithful friend, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.